I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. Chile. Another question. This came up one time, uh, I think two weeks ago, and it was just one person. So I responded to the email individually, privately. But then after that, a whole bunch of other people asked the exact same question. So now I, I feel like I need to need to answer the question more completely for everybody's benefit. My explanation of meme again. So my answer starts this way. I think that a lot of people look at these as memes. These are internet memes. It's a picture with text that you share. And it can go viral if enough people share it. So here's the uh, uh, the baby with the with the fist pump. This is the success uh, the ki the success kid meme, and you know here it's like open the window to let it fly off. It flew out. Yes, fist pump. So it's usually something to share, something humorous to share with other people. This is the Morpheus meme. Uh, what if I told you? Which is a line from Matrix, and then down here you can you can do a lot of different things that. Uh, you want with that. You know, what if I told you and then something down here. This is the GGG meme, the good guy Greg. So Greg is a is a guy smoking a, a joint with a pleasant grin. This is the meme to talk about when some guy is considerate and nice and pleasant to other people, keeps other people in mind. So a meme here, microwave, microwaving at midnight when everyone's asleep, opens it, one second to go so it doesn't beep. Thus, disturbing everyone's sleep. So these are examples of internet memes. So that's what people think are memes today. Uh, what I meant to say last time was that memes had a much longer history, predating the internet by about at least 20 years. So I'll explain what memes used to be, what it still is today. Internet memes are just a subset of the overall concept of memes. And previously, I talked about how religions have a meme of exclusivity. That's a defensive mechanism for the meme, like, my way is the only correct way. That's the meme of exclusivity. The meme of eternal punishment is another one that's hell and damnation and, you know, uh, stuff like that, eternal torture. And the uh, message to everyone on the Internet is that uh, if you want to hear more or less about a particular topic or a kind of topic, uh, you let me know and I will adjust accordingly. Okay, so speaking of memes, let me continue on and talk about how the concept of memes began. There's a, a famous book called The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins is a very uh, well-known atheist. He's an evolutionary biologist. Uh, he's an authority in his field, and he wrote this particular book, The Selfish Gene, as you can see, quite some time ago, 1976. So, you know, a little mental calculation, we're talking uh, 30, 40 years ago now. Wow. So, in that book, he describes evolution from the perspective of the gene. That is, a gene wants to propagate itself. It wants to compete effectively against other genes. And he brought in this concept of the meme as the mental equivalent of the gene. <clears throat> so it's a concept or style or possibly a behavior, the meme, that propagates mentally just like genes can propagate biologically. The example that I used when the question was first asked a couple of weeks ago was that I said, if you notice, people nowadays are saying, I know, right? So notice, notice the way that is said. I know, right? You know, it ends as, as a question. It's, it's an actual agreement. So that's very common now to, for people to say that. You know, uh, when you make a comment about something, uh, boy, is that is uh, is the uh, how about the all the rain recently that we're getting in Southern California? I know, right? Okay, so. 
what people may not be aware, uh, the younger people may not be aware of, is that uh, in it was uh, something that came into popularity only in the last 10 years or so. Prior to that, the specific way of saying it like that, that particular style, did not exist. Now, it came into popularity because people look at one another and they imitate one another. They imitate the, the way that is spoken from one another and then it's spread. So it's not a picture, it's not a, a picture with text on it, it doesn't spread by the internet, it spreads by personal contact, but it's a meme. So memes like genes can be modified through replication or adapted for different culture and thus evolve in time. So there are all kinds of memes that have been changed uh, and gone into different cultures and uh, one particular meme that appeared in multiple countries, multiple cultural backgrounds, was Kilroy was here. And then there's another one, uh, also written on walls, for a good time call. Uh, that's another meme, not, not the internet. And notice that because this was 1976, it's way before the internet, internet became popular. So uh, my website, I remember, um, that was in .net. Uh, I started that in 1998. And it was at the very beginning of the internet, where it was uh, when it was still possible to, to get a very nice and short internet website name like thousand.net. So unfortunately, thousand.com and thousand.org were already taken. Um, you know, thousand.net those were all taken, but thousand.net still uh, was still up for grabs. So. I mentioned that the, they can compete for survival, they can attack and defend. Um, memes of exclusivity is a defensive mechanism for religions. So the idea is that you see this in the different sects of Christianity uh, in our Western culture, in that every sect will claim to be the true way and that everybody else got it wrong. So that's a way for that particular religion, that meme of religious reality, to hold on to the members that believe in it and not stray to other other uh, faiths or other styles, other practitioners. And the reason why it needs to do that is because the more people it has, the more likely it is to propagate itself in time to the next generation and so on. So that's memes. So just to kind of wrap up the discussion on memes, Here's, a, here's another example of a meme that has propagated and has evolved uh, with and without the internet. The, the meme is turning a negative word into a positive word. So it actually has a pretty long history, although initially people didn't think of it in terms of uh, mimetic transmission people just thought that it was an interesting twist on an existing concept. So May West, in case you don't know who that is, that's a, a beautiful actress who was extremely famous at the time that she uh, uh, was showing in movies. There's a movie called A No Angel from 1933. In that movie, her most famous line that became iconic in the culture was that this very beautiful, sultry, seductive actress, she says, oh, when I'm good, I'm very good. When I'm bad, I'm better. So there, you have this connection between bad and desirability, something that's positive, turning a negative into a positive. So. That's the earliest example that I can personally think of. There, there's probably other examples that I'm not even aware of. Later on, so here we have the Michael Jackson bag. So I remember for a, a while after 1987, when you talk about something being bad, you always have to clarify. You know, you mean the Michael Jackson bag, or you mean the the bad bag? Okay. So now, later on, and much more recently. Badass has become a very popular term. And over here, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, he, uh, this, is a, this is a drawing made from a video recording of Dr. deGrasse Tyson, 
who was talking about Newton. Um, in the world of mathematics, calculus, physics, uh, the greatest genius, the more you learn about it, the more you realize that Newton was just, in, uh, was just an incredible mind. We have some super geniuses in the world today. They look at what Newton has done, and they, like Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, when they understand what Newton came up with, everybody's like this. Everybody's like, whoa, he's a, he's a badass. He's, he's like uh, amazing for him to have come up with his methods on integral calculus. Um, when you're at a certain level, you can master the technique. You know how to do it. You can be really good at it. But what you cannot do is to figure out how it was invented in the first place. That seems to take some sort of uh, divine energy somehow, something that's, uh, you know, that's handed to you as a gift from God almost. So that's what he meant when he said that Newton was a badass. This, this meme has now morphed and evolved into a completely different application. This reflects the fact that on the internet, people make themselves appear to be tough guys. Like, you know, um, you better stop spreading that vile falsehood or I'm going to teach you a lesson. Then you can use that meme. Well, watch out, we got a badass here. Uh, that's a sarcastic way to say that, yeah, everybody is uh, physically courageous when they're hiding behind the glow of their computer screen. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't know where you are. We don't know who you are, and you also know that you're protected by the anonymous nature of the internet. Therefore, you can talk like a badass. You can be the big guy who's brave when nobody can find you. But in real life, you will probably be much nicer, much more meek, and much more passive than this badass personality that you have on the internet. So you can, you can now you can see how things get changed. And you know, wicked. Um, I hear people say, whoa, that's wicked. And they, they don't mean that's evil, that's sinful. They mean that's like really cool, that it's great. <clears throat> it's, it's, so, it's so good that it's bad. The Michael Jackson bad, right? And then sick, sickest, that is sick. That's a, that's a popular term. These days, you know, uh, people uh, don't really mean, um, don't really mean disease. <laughs> <laughs> right? When they say sick, they just mean that it is it, it is sickeningly good. It is so good, it's so sick. It makes me sick how good that is. That's the uh, that's the idea. Uh, crazy old one uh, in Western culture, crazy has always had something of a positive connotation. Uh, even from a long time ago, people want to be crazy, quote unquote, because they like to be seen as fun loving. Party animals, you know. Oh yeah, I guess oh, it's just a little crazy. I got some, uh, you know. But in other cultures, crazy just means mental illness, which is not a good thing. So in Western culture, that's uh, rather unique. Uh, deadly, a recent one. You know, wow, you're right. That is deadly, dude. Uh, that's uh, deadly used to be a bad term about something that's dangerous, but now it can be a good term as well. And killer. Killa, gangsta. Uh, so these are all negative terms that used to be very negative, but now have taken on a positive connotation. So the bomb, you know, the bomb used to be a good thing. Now the bomb. Now you can you can still use that in a very negative way, like if you are performing, maybe a musician, stand up comedian, whatever, and if someone was to say you bombed. Okay, that's not a good thing. But if someone says, you're the bomb, okay, that's a good thing. That just means that you do a really good job. So all of these nuances in the language all came from this overall meme of turning something negative into a positive. So that, you know, it's fascinating to see that the distance between bad and good is actually not so clear cut. And in some ways, that's also rather doubt oriented that you have this circle, you have the two halves that move into one another, and it's always constantly rotating, it's never staying still, it's never static. That's exactly what we're seeing. Language is a living, breathing thing. 
it's the Tao of humanity to communicate with one another. Therefore, our communication is also constantly evolving, moving into each other's territories and mixing it up to be interesting. Somehow, some way, we always understand each other. We understand what the other person is saying, you know, despite the fact that there are all these rules that are culturally uh, oriented, culturally anchored, that tell us if someone means a positive or a negative thing. At some point, you know, people will probably start to use the word positive and negative and twisting them around in creative ways. Then I'm going to have to find some other way to describe positivity and negativity. <clears throat> so that's memes. Fascinating topic all by itself. Let's go ahead and do the meeting and the ritual, everybody. Shiri. 面向佛堂 OK, everybody, we are done. Participate in the Tao meeting by joining us online. For information, go to Taoism.net forward slash Tao.